Okay. So, um, as I was saying about the canteen, uh, made of wood. Now, when these would rot out, this is what's so neat about Lewis and Clark. You can go from, as we're dressed, we're dressed like privates. And I'm so glad nobody asked the question, the bane of our existence, uh, uh, me and Ed Eller were asked that two or three times in Jeff City last month. Which one are you, Lewis or Clark? <laughs> now, who thinks I'm Lewis? Who thinks I'm Clark? Of course, you guys are smart. We get that all the time. Uh, and, and that's, of course, an opening of uh, education. We are dressed as privates. If, uh, I have pictures to show what our captains look like when they're in full regalia. And I mean, there's a lot to it. Uh, but how do you tell we're military? Well, you see the black uh, you know, leather neck that we have. Uh, have you heard Marines are called leather necks? All of the armed services in early America had leather collars around their necks. It goes back to the Middle Ages when people would have sword fights and it would protect your jugular vein. And the Marines were the last to give that up. So that's why they get this, uh, you know this uh, um, nickname is the leather knife so this tells you this person is in the service of someone he's not a civilian also the black spats would be another one and also these funny hats and I know when I first joined uh, one of the things I said is what's with those funny hats does anybody think that themselves you can ask go ahead <laughs> yes. what's up with our funny hats well these are called foraging caps you know what does it mean to forage the foraging cap forage means to look around for things well what does that have to do with a hat it's all in its design so I'll take mine off here and of course you see the red one that's on it just like Ed has this is the first regiment so this is what grew into the big red one the first infantry division uh, one for north of the Ohio River two for south of the Ohio River and so when you uh, fold these out once again made of wool and I told you before how they would sell sheens of wool and somebody said it looks like a, you know, an elf's cap or a Dr. Seuss kind of <laughs> cap here. And it would just be a rectangle and they would cut it in half like that and then turn it into a triangle. Well, just like camping is today, if you're a Boy Scout, uh, you want to have things that have multiple use. And so this thing has many uses, uh, four I'm up to right now, uh, along the Missouri River, okay? Uh, it's very barren out in like, say, eastern Montana, but along the river itself, there's many uh, berry bushes. You've got chokecherry bushes, huckleberry, blueberry, bilberry. You can walk along the river and collect, you know, berries, things, the nuts, whatever, to eat. So it would be, remember I said there was no pockets. So anything you can double up to carry something. I know that when we would be offered uh, one of the greatest things being a reenactor in the field is when some local says, hey, you want to take a shower at our place? Ah, shower! And, you know, I'll grab my toothbrush and my, my soap and I have a little something to carry things in. So that would be one thing we'd do. Uh, the Missouri River, does anybody know one of its nicknames? We call it the Big Muddy. As everything around here is muddy, the Big Muddy. And so, you know, there's a lot of debris coming down in that river sometimes. It's very sandy. The whole thing's changed out there. It's just out there since those floods last year. And they would literally scoop up water and it would be like a filter. And it would take out some of the debris. Of course, you have a lot of crap in your hat you'd have to clean out. But it would take out some of the sticks and the sand and you could clean them. They didn't have to worry about chemical pollution back then or sewage. They just had to worry about debris in the water. So that was another useful thing. Uh, another way you could use if I find a coin here, I had read where uh, they would actually, uh, frontiersmen would keep uh, money uh, in, their, um, in their foraging caps. They only got, soldiers only made $5 a month back then. And so it would be uh, really nice if they had something to carry their money in. So I tried that, and here is a replica of a Spanish shilling. Keep in mind that British pounds were still being used, shillings. You know, the British Empire was out there. Uh, the Spanish Empire was out there. So there's a lot of different coins, and coins from the early uh, United States. So I'd take my replica of Spanish shilling, put it in there, roll it up, put it on my head. You would carry your bank on your head. And I had about $1.70 in modern money. Left it up there about six weeks, forgot about it completely. I'm like, hey, I think I got some coins up there. <laughs> you know, <so laughs> Stores scrounge around for money. And it worked. I didn't even know it. So a mountain man, you know, would have his money in his personal bank on his head and, you know, the various beads and everything and wampum or whatever on your person at all times. So you were, the sum total who you were was it. You're looking at it. So that's why they were pretty colorful characters. And of course, at night, when it would get cold, you just go like right over here because you you get the right size and it's just oh, wide enough to go over your ears so it's a sleeping cap as well 
So that's uh, the four-in-one uses of our awesome foraging caps. And um, one of our members' wives, uh, Nancy Ulrich, uh, did she make that one that you have? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And uh, you can see Ed's has been, what, did you get run over by a herd of puffalo? <laughs> that was just the one day, right? He was savaged by the upper Columbia River in November. Ed got mm -hmm. to go. I'm going to brag about Ed here a little bit on this trip. Mm -hmm. And Ed got to go the entire 2005 season, which we call the glory year, because that's where they started in Bismarck, North Dakota. And they did the whole portage around the Great Falls. And then they did the bitter roots. We went over the bitter roots just like we have great weather, our group did. And then they had to go down the Columbia in November. Oh, and they can tell you stories. So it, it really, you know, the, the, the land doesn't know that it's a reenactment. It's just as nasty now as it was back then. So uh, they certainly have some adventures.